When we talk about butterflies, we usually imagine something amazingly beautiful that flies from flower to flower and eats nectar. And the caterpillar, well, it's the future butterfly. A completely innocent, harmless, defenseless creature that quietly eats leaves and grass. But no, every family has its black sheep. There are butterflies, which come from predatory caterpillars. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. It turns out that not all caterpillars are herbivores. Some of them are bum 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 predators. However, predators among caterpillars are very rare, and they don't account for more than 1% of the population. In some cases, such a diet is caused by the lack of plant foods, but there are also caterpillars who are simply predators. Today we'll talk about the caterpillar Eupithecia ochloris, and also touch up on the process of how the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. First off, I'd like to point out one peculiarity. For some reason, representatives of the genus Eupithecia that live in Hawaii are all carnivores. There are about 20 species there. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, hundreds of other representatives of this genus are harmless herbivores. There must be some kind of unhealthy environment in Hawaii. Eupithecia lives on the islands of Kauai, Oahu, Maui, Veranda, and Hawaii. Living in lush forests full of vegetation, this caterpillar prefers to feed on flies and other insects that suit its size. Eupithecia or Chloris looks like the most common moth, only a little bigger. It only became famous for the fact that its caterpillar is insectivorous. It has a whole variety of devices for catching prey. It has two well-developed abdominal appendages, which serve as a trigger when capturing prey. During the attack, it can bend in almost any direction. When the insect gets near the pheromone bait, the caterpillar captures the prey with its six clawed forepaws covered in sensitive hairs. By the way, the way the caterpillar hunts is somewhat reminiscent of the way that carnivorous plants hunt. Incredible camouflage coloring allows it to stay unnoticed. It can easily pass for a young green twig or a blade of grass. We all know that the caterpillar is only one of the stages in the life transformation of a butterfly. So let's take a look at how the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. The life cycle of the butterflies has four stages, egg, pupa, caterpillar larvae, and imago, the adult insect. First, the adult butterfly lays eggs and thereby gives rise to a new life. Depending on the species, the eggs can be round, oval, cylindrical, conical, flattened, and even bottle-shaped. The eggs differ not only in shape, but also in color. They are covered with a dense, hard shell, the chorion. The embryo under the chorion has a supply of nutrients, very similar to the well-known egg yolk. This is the feature that helps distinguish between two main life forms of butterfly eggs. The eggs of the first group are poor in yolk. Inactive and weak caterpillars develop from such eggs. They look more like tadpoles. They have a huge head and a very thin body. Caterpillars of these species need to start feeding immediately after hatching. And only after that will they acquire more appropriate proportions. That is why butterflies of these species lay their eggs on a host plant, on leaves, stems, or branches. The other butterflies have eggs that are rich in yolk and ensure the development of strong and active caterpillars. Leaving the eggshell, these caterpillars immediately begin to crawl in different directions. Sometimes they crawl over considerable distances before they find suitable food. Therefore, butterflies that lay such eggs don't need to take special care of their placement. They lay them wherever they can. There are also Lepidoptera butterflies, which try to bury their eggs into the ground. The number of eggs in a clutch also depends on the species and can sometimes reach 1,000 or even more. 
but not all of them survive to the adult stage. It depends on factors such as temperature and humidity. Moreover, butterfly eggs have no enemies in the world of insects. The egg stage can last from several days in the warm season to several months if the eggs are laid during winter. Now, as the egg develops, the caterpillar is formed, which then gnaws through the shell and comes out. In some species, the caterpillar hibernates inside the egg and leaves it only with the onset of spring. In many species, caterpillars eat the shell of their egg immediately after hatching. Depending on the species, the development of the caterpillar can last from several days to several years in highland and polar species. As soon as the caterpillar is born, it begins to feed intensively. In the process of growth, the caterpillar molts several times. It changes its outer shell. There are an average of four to five molts usually, but there are also species that molt up to 40 times. After the last molt, the caterpillar turns into a pupa. Butterfly caterpillars living in colder climates often don't have time to complete their life cycle in one summer and diapause until the next summer. By the time of molting, the caterpillar stops eating, becomes motionless, hides in shelters and protected places. The pupa doesn't move and doesn't eat. It only lies, hangs and waits spending the reserves accumulated by the caterpillar. From the outside, it may look like nothing is happening, but this is the last stage of the amazing transformation. Very important vital processes of restructuring the body happen inside the pupa. New organs are being formed. The pupa is completely defenseless. The only thing that allows it to survive is its relative invisibility to the enemies, birds and predatory insects. The development of a butterfly pupa usually lasts two to three weeks. However, in some species, the pupa is a stage that goes into winter diapause. In some families, the caterpillar builds a silk cocoon before pupation. All caterpillars can secrete silk fiber, thread, most use it to attach to the substrate when moving. The caterpillar crawling on a plant or on the soil always leaves a thin silk path behind. If it falls from a branch, it will remain hanging by that thread. Sericulture is a branch of agriculture, the purpose of which is the production of raw materials for the production of natural silk. They breed some species of caterpillars specifically to obtain silk. The textile industry favors the domestic silk moth. As a result of selection, many kinds of silk moths have been bred. They differ in productivity, quality of silk thread, and color of the cocoons. To obtain the silk thread, the pupa is first killed with hot steam and water on the 10th day after pupation. The silk cocoon usually contains up to 3,500 meters of fiber, but only a third of it can be unwound. To get one kilogram of raw silk, one needs cocoons of about 1,000 caterpillars that eat 60 kilograms of mulberry leaves in a month and a half. About nine kilograms of silk thread can be obtained from 100 kilograms of cocoons. An adult insect, imago, emerges from the pupa. The shell of the pupa bursts, and the imago has to apply a lot of effort to crawl out, clinging to the edge of the pupa with its feet. The newborn butterfly can't fly yet. Its wings are small, as if folded, and wet. The insect needs to climb up to a place where it can wait for its wings to fully spread. In two to three hours, the wings lose their elasticity harden, and acquire their final color. Now the butterfly can make its first flight. The lifespan of the adult butterfly varies from a few hours to several months, but the average life expectancy of butterflies is only two to three weeks. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed watching this, 
comment and let me know what you learned today in this video. And be sure to subscribe to our channel too while you're at it. We'll see you next time.